What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear 5R work plans, drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Hello, everyone. Today's show is brought to you by our new Biz Chicks signature digital course, which we're calling Your Next Best Hire. Be sure to check it out. And did you know that I am a certified life coach? Well, on today's show, I'm telling you why. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. You are about to invest in your own personal development so that you can grow as a leader. You're not here to simply collect new tools and concepts. You're here to listen and then take inspired action as you apply what you just learned. I'm your host, Shelley Warren, your team and leadership coach here at BizChicks Inc., where along with Natalie Ekdahl, CEO and host of the award-winning BizChicks podcast, we coach and train women entrepreneurs to grow their business, create more profit, and live a full life. If you're listening to this in real time, it's February. And although it's a short month on the calendar, it's a long month way up here in the Great White North. Snow, ice rain, brisk wind, blinding sunshine that bounces off the snow, winter tires that save lives, shoveling, and of course, mittens. And I'm also a hat girl, so that's kind of fun. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. And that and waiting for April when the first signs of spring arrive. So in the meantime, I order my Starbucks extra hot so it quickly rises up to my favorite temperature on my ember cup when I get to the office. What's been happening with you? Talk to me in the DMs on Instagram where I'm at Stacking Your Team Podcast or on LinkedIn where I'm Shelly with an I, Warren. I love meeting podcast listeners. I'm so happy that you're joining me today. So as we connect here together, let me remind you that the team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there. Let's start with the shout out to S. Spencer in MD, who left us this five-star review on Apple Podcast that she titled, Great Advice, Every week. She says, in less than 25 minutes, this podcast gives CEOs and team leaders tools and action items to grow their business. From the hard issues of managing poor team performance to providing structure for your team to thrive. Shelly tackles them all. Listening to this podcast is time well spent that will pay off. And you get to complete the episode on your morning walk with your dog. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, S. Spencer, who I know is a wonderful client of mine. And I'm sharing her review today on this episode where I talk about why I became a life coach. I think it's wonderful how these things work out. It was totally meant to be that her review was shared today. And I just have to tell you a bit about her. Shelly Spencer is the CEO of Strategic Impact Advisors. She's a former lawyer who now leads a virtual team in Africa as they increase women's financial literacy by providing digital mobile products. She's on a mission to create more equality in poor communities, starting with getting more mobile solutions into the hands of women. She is a gem, and I encourage you to connect with her on LinkedIn, where she's Shelly E.Y. Spencer of SIA. Thanks so much, Shelly. 
So yes, I am a certified life coach. Now, some people guess that where others can't quite put their finger on it, but they know there's something different about working with me. Chalk it up to life experiences and learned wisdom or just my personality to want to coach. It all works because people who work with me are wanting a transformation and I enjoy being there alongside them as they do it. So why did I get certified? Well, there's really three reasons, which I'm going to spill the beans about. But first, I've always been a coach. It started when I was in elementary school, walking other kids to school that my mother would volunteer me for. And although along the way, I would answer questions, (laughs) lots of them, many of the little kids You know, I say little kids, but I was like 10 when I started doing this. Those little kids wondered about things, and I'd chime in, mostly trying to calm their worries and boost their confidence. It could get sticky because they'd tell me things about their home life that once they told me, they couldn't untell me. Nothing that required me to call the cops, thankfully, but it was then that I first learned how to keep information locked in the vault, and build trust with people. In my teens and through my early 20s, I shifted to being a coach from being a gymnast. And boy, oh boy, I absolutely loved being a gymnastics coach. And then I became a dance coach right up through all of my 30s. And even when I had other jobs alongside these coaching gigs, I always found myself on the end of a question with someone looking at me for the answer and trusting that I'd keep a lid on it all. You would be surprised how many young people have secrets. When I moved into jobs that had the title of leader or manager attached to them, the coaching aspects of the roles came naturally. Albeit, there were times that my role of leader and friend got blurred. It was a sticky business sometimes, and I was learning how to become someone's performance coach at work rather than the therapist that they wanted. The teams got bigger, the responsibilities had way more zeros attached to them, and the what makes people tick aspect of the people I was leading became more and more relevant to their ability to perform and handle the pressure of what it took to work at a Fortune 50 corporation. I found myself noticing a few things about myself, too. I had a terrible habit of letting other people's problems become mine. (laughs) Some of you may be able to relate to that. I was feeding my tendencies to be a fixer, a closer, someone who could push something over the finish line come hell or high water. Problem was, I was getting rewarded for it. Turning performance around and getting results consistently became my reputation, and so naturally, I wanted to build on it. It became my brand in corporate, and the more I was learning about people, the better the outcomes. Another terrible habit that I had was winging it. Something that comes naturally to Colby Quick Starts, who like to get moving on their inspired ideas, and I'm also an Enneagram 3 to boot. You know, those people who are essentially performers, no matter what, you can always count on them to deliver. I had learned to count on my ability to notice slight body movements and expressions. I learned that through my years as being a gymnastics and a dance coach. And of course, I was getting really great at recognizing energy levels, and I would make assumptions about all of that in hopes that I could turn it all around, motivating the person to make a shift. Most times it worked, but sometimes it didn't, and I knew there was something missing. As the decades flew by, I was learning how to look at myself and how my own messes could cloud my judgment and ability to lead. I learned the more I could look inward, the more patience I had for others. And the more I put myself to one side and put my teams out front, the more we achieved and people noticed. When my late 40s came along, I was doing a lot of soul searching, wanting something different in my work and something different out of life. I wanted to learn how to coach myself, really see what I was doing that was self-sabotaging my burnout rate at work, and I wanted to better understand why my local volunteering was fueling so many aspects of my personality 
that I had somehow told myself that work didn't actually require. It all felt disjointed, and I was starting to resent my role at work. So, like any good quick start, I started a small business coaching women who wanted to step into encore careers from corporate, and that morphed into helping local women entrepreneurs build a business. And then that grew into allowing me to manifest an early retirement at 52 from corporate. And within a month of leaving corporate, I knew there was still something missing. And then I found podcasts. I subscribed to three. The links are in the show notes, of course. The first one was Women Taking the Lead with Jody Flynn, who the next year would invite me to be a guest on her podcast. Jody had a long-standing corporate career that she transitioned over into the entrepreneurial world and was using her platform to elevate women in leadership roles. It was my very first guest appearance, and I was so nervous and so grateful, and I am still a raving fan of women taking the lead. I also found Biz Chicks with Nally Ekdahl, who I then began to form a relationship with her in the Facebook group. And about a year later, I became a client of Natalie's, a podcast guest, a speaker at her live events, and then a full-fledged team member as a coach and a podcast host. And if you're not already subscribed to Natalie's Biz Chicks podcast, well, you better do it. You'll love it and you'll learn all about her Six Figures Lab group coaching program. And the other podcast that I was becoming a raving fangirl about was The Life Coach School, hosted by Brooke Castillo. She was trained through Martha Beck. Mm -hmm. That Martha Beck, Oprah's life coach. So within a few months of retiring, I was in California with 25 other women from the U.S. being trained on how to become a life coach. And I would attend more and more in-person trainings with Brooke, get certified, and stay connected to a few of the women who are in my core heart, even today. She's not everyone's cup of tea. So how did becoming a life coach fit in? Well, I told you there were three reasons. Here they are. Reason number one, I wanted to learn how to manage my own mind because I was having a hard time becoming my new identity. You see, it was more difficult than I thought to educate people about what I was doing now and then own it after being known as Shelly from Procter & Gamble or Shelly the local champion of women and girls. Here was my problem. As a coach, people didn't want to pay to work with me because, are you ready for it? They told me that they believed that I didn't really need the cash. Natalie was a godsend in helping me bust through this hurdle over the next few years as my business coach. And here's the second reason why I wanted to become certified as a life coach. I wanted to help other women realize that they could impact how fast how smooth, how joyful they could move through the various stages of their life by managing their own mind. I was excited to think about how my clients and I could learn together to be who we were becoming as we evolved as women. We all have so many habits that are holding us back, and I knew that there would be other women who are struggling with their own identity crises as wives, mothers, and of course, CEOs. And the third reason why I wanted to become certified as a life coach is that I wanted to be able to see my clients much deeper than their brand or their role title or the size of their family or the size of their team or even the size of their revenue. The women that I work with are all incredible and I want to know her, the woman behind the brand so that we can develop her and then watch how it will trickle on over into every aspect of her life, including her business and her team. So here's the thing. Becoming a certified life coach at the Life Coach School with Brooke Castillo gave me extra tools that I can use with the tools that I've learned from Natalie Ekdahl here at BizChicks, the tools that I created here at BizChicks, and of course, the tools that I've carried with me from my corporate career. These tools make up this incredible toolbox that help me guide my clients through challenges in their business operations, their team, and of course, their life. I strongly believe that great coaches are keen to learn 
and then take what they've learned and pour it right back in to their clients. And that's what happens during our calls with my one-to-one clients. We often talk about way more than just business and teams. We dive into what her current challenge is. So it could be a business challenge, it could be a team challenge, or it could be a problem with elder care, childcare, finances, her wellness, even menopause. And of course, some of my one-to-one clients come to me because they want to develop exit strategies. And I've been known to share some scripts and quips that work amazingly well with spouses. (laughs) After all, life outside of the business is affecting her business and vice versa. When I help the whole woman, she can then take her whole self to work, to play, and then back home again. You know, it can be tough leading a successful business, a busy home, and a deep-rooted community life, and of course, your team. You can get distracted by it all and the emotions that everyone else is feeling. If we don't manage our own minds, we can find ourselves adopting the emotions of others, essentially making them our own. And that's so draining. Coaching can help you to not get derailed by your team or by others and instead discern how best to keep your stance and help others find their way through those challenges. Coaching can help you sift through your mind, grab what you need the most, and then take action on it. It's all right there. As a coach, I simply help you uncover it and help you do a bit of organizing like they do on those HGTV declutter shows. We keep, we toss, and we donate. Thoughts, habits, stories, and beliefs. I found that many women have not had mentors or coaches growing up at school or in sports. And when they begin their professional life, there was a few of them to go around. And of course, some of them that were available, just, well, they weren't really a great fit for them. I get it. Asking for help is a big deal for many people. And my hand is held really high right now because I'm declaring that out loud too. I was brought up not to ask for anything. Be super low maintenance not cause a scene, and generally always look like help, not ask for it. And through becoming a life coach, I learned how to watch those habitual thoughts bubbling up in certain situations and then flip the switch on them. So now when I say what looks like help to you right now, yes, it was my mantra in corporate life, and I still ask that question multiple times a day. The difference now, though, is that I can discern their answer and can reply in such a way that points out their major role in the situation and my minor role by asking more questions, nudging her to face what's truly going on. I'm not her fixer. I'm her guide. And now I help women uncover why she's thinking what she is, see how it's not serving her, reconsider how she feels, and then tell me what really does look like help to her so that she can thoughtfully do it. I can provide a tool, a script, a framework so that she can then move forward, busting through what's holding her back and deciding what kind of life and business she truly wants. She also learns that her business and her life doesn't have to be like everyone else's. So as we close out today's episode, here's your next best step. How about taking a moment to think about the mentors that you've had over the years? Do you still stay in touch with them? If you don't, why not drop them a card, an email, reach out to them on social media? If there was ever a time where people needed to feel connected to others, it's right now. You know, my corporate mentor reached out to me a few months ago, wanting to dip into my memory bank about something, and we had a chance to catch up. That call made my day, and I know he hung up feeling lighter too. The most common thing that my clients say during our one-to-one calls is this. I feel so much better now. It's the best. I just love it. I love seeing her shift back into confidence mode, assuredness, her capability shining through her Trello board, her action planning, and her goal setting, and my epic notes, she's able to take that new attitude, new energy, and let it spill over into her home, her relationships, her business, and her team. It's all so incredible to be a part of. 
If one-to-one -one mentoring feels like something that would add value to your life, I have a few spots open for this year. Why not apply? I'd love to learn more about you. You can email me at Shelly at bizchicks.com. And remember, I spell Shelly with an I and bizchicks with an X. So Shelly at bizchicks.com. That's my own personal email. And I'll send you an application link. Or you can use the link that's in the show notes. And if you're hiring this year, you want to be sure to check out our new digital course, Your Next Best Hire. Check out the link in the show notes. Leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today.